Day two of CES or something. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> Day zero of the dumbest show in the history of shows. Yeah, I bet there's dumber shows. Maybe there, yeah, there's got to be fair. something like sure. FiberCon where they just talk about fibers that are going into baskets or something. I think that would be. Okay, fair enough. They, there was something marginally interesting announced yesterday. This thing. Um. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, if you're on the audio version, this is going to be bad. I just kind of. I mean, what it looks like to me is a stylized Xbox Elite controller, but it has a little animated display above the Xbox button. Yeah, and it has RGB going right okay. there. Lighting. Okay. Yep. 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 So this is. So uh, what's the point of the display other than being irritating? <laughs> can it can show you valuable things, Paul, such as the battery life of the controller. I see. I can also. You know show what I like your... to see in that display, Brad? Would be the number of times I've been killed in a game while I'm playing Call of Duty. Yeah. See, that would require Something developer the game input. Something refuses in, to uh, tell me. Good luck. Yeah, that, that's not happening. That would be a good use for it. But mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. here's the other thing, Paul. They support, they, they claim, and this is the Asus, Asus Rakiri something or blah, 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 okay. or whatever. Oops, mm-hmm, or whatever. Yeah. Tri-mode connectivity, Paul Theron. Here's the tri-mode connectivity. USB-C, mm-hmm. 2.4 gigahertz, low latency, and mm-hmm. Bluetooth. Now. So 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi? It says RF. Oh. Which would make you think okay. that you could connect to your P- uh, Xbox console wirelessly. like wirelessly. Well, uh, the consoles may not support it, that, it, right? Don't, it doesn't. Yeah, because, it, yeah. At least yeah, yeah. in their so PR stuff. Is this for like say. TVs and things like that? Like this is the way you, you know. So, uh, I guess the idea here is this will work with anything. Yeah, Any, they pitch well, it primarily as a PC controller, I believe. But okay. it also works with your Xbox if you want to be a peasant and run that. So what's, USB-C I don't understand cable. what the RFs were though. What, who has an RF controller? I don't know. I don't know if they if they're going to sell a dongle. And like all things CES, oh. we don't have oh, a price. Okay. We don't have a release date. So I mean, honestly, this might make it let it work with a t- smart TV if you have Game Pass, uh, game Ooh. streaming or whatever, cloud gaming. Now there's an interesting thought. Yeah, I, I just don't understand why you would have R, like R. There's nothing compatible with RF like other than TVs and well, a dongle. I mean, I guess a dongle. So, <laughs> dongle is RF like line of sight? I don't, I'm not even sure. But let's let's Paul, let's pretend yeah. that it does work with the, the TVs. Yep. But here's the hilarious. Thing. What do you think this controller is going to cost? It's got an OLED yeah. display on it. Granted, it's black and white, but I think this has to be roughly as expensive as an Elite controller. I think this thing has got to be 150, close to 200 bucks. I would bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yep. if you're going to go out there, Paul, and you're going to say, "I'm going to spend," let's just say, 149 dollars on this controller, so I can play Xbox on that Samsung TV through cloud gaming. Why not do yourself the service and spend 50 bucks more, get a whole dang console that comes <laughs> with a controller and is a better experience? That's right. It has better uh, less latency. I, yeah. I mean, I. If I was going to play cloud gaming on a TV, I'd probably use a USB cable, frankly, um, assuming that. Yeah. Well, actually, how would that work? I don't know. Yeah. Early days. Inter- well, anyway, it's interesting. Yeah, it's it possible is. they're positioning it for something we don't know about yet, which is you know some future expansion on smart TVs or something. There was also an AMD event last night, which was, they announced, <laughs> like Intel, they announced a bunch of mobile stuff, and I I think for the second year in a row, Panos came out on stage. It was a little no, bit more awkward really. this year because they're not selling anything made by AMD except for the consoles. But yeah, so I guess he was there in his role as the Windows guy because yeah. there are a lot of you know AMD powered laptops being announced this week. So that is awkward, though. Yeah, I, that, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We love AMD, AMD, but we're not shipping that. it in the Surface laptop anymore. <laughs> right. Like we just dropped the AMD uh, variant, uh, which, by the way, was the preferable version. And I would argue, in this era of uh, 12th gen Intel chips, is still the preferable option. Um, in fact, yeah. I would argue that very strongly. Um, oh well, I like Surface laptop. It's cute. The other. There's two other things, because there's actually a lot announced this week. We, one of them we didn't touch on yesterday, but uh, probably the least surprising thing is Roku launching their own TV line. That just kind of felt like a natural... I think people hear that, and they're like, wait a minute. 
aren't there already Roku TVs? And of course, they're high sense TVs and you know whatever other brands. Um, so mm -hmm. it's like they're their source. This is this is um, how do you call these things? This is like a, this is the classic ODM story. You know, like um, mm -hmm. uh, as a million years ago when Longhorn was still kind of kicking around, and we would go to those like WinHEC shows. We would see these ODM laptops that had those external displays in the back of the lid. I don't mm -hmm. remember what they called that, but it, the company that made that, let's see if I can get this right, was either Asus or it was probably Asus. Asus at that time didn't sell laptops. Asus made des, you know reference designs that were sold by Dell and other companies. Um, and so shortly thereafter, they started making their own laptops. You know, and so I, I, I sort of view this as that same kind of thing. Like um, Roku looked at the market and said, you know. Instead of just licensing this, we could hook up with one of these ODMs and sell something that competes with the high senses and whatever else is mm -hmm. out there of the world, right? These cheap TVs. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Why not? The, I think, speaking of why not, I am in favor of this one because I'm in the fruit world. But the new Qi 2 standard right. for wireless charging is just Apple's MagSafe. That's right. Which is... Yeah. People, there's which a, is interesting that Apple. I think it's would, fantastic, personally. But no, I, I know, but I, I think about it from Apple's kind of protectionist viewpoint. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. there's some cachet to being like, "Hey, we were there first, you know. I I will say one of the big problems with, well, <laughs> one of the many many problems switching between ecosystems is, you know, I, I I have a car mount now that is MagSafe. I had one before that was based on magnets, so you had to put something in the back of a case for it yep. to, you know, to stick. Those two things aren't compatible. Like I can't use a MagSafe phone with yeah. the magnet thing, and I can't use a magnet case with the MagSafe mm -hmm. thing for some reason. I mean, it's just magnets. You would think this would just work, but interoperability is always good. I, I'm just surprised. Maybe there's some cachet to them being, you know, like uh, like I know Apple had played a big role in what became FireWire back in the day. I E E E thirteen ninety four. I think. Uh, I don't know. I think there's it's good. It's different good. There's pressures no... that <clears throat> that are that are driving this. Personally, think of it. Uh, you are Belkin as an example. Right. You go to the the cheese standard. You're like, look, we're already making tens of thousands of these things for the Apple world. They'll let you use the patent. We aren't going to build to a different standard. You can either build this and make our stuff work on everything, or just good luck. Yeah. I mean, yeah. think about from like that from that the. the the companies well, that make the Apple, chargers. Apple has enough power to kind of just say, yeah, too bad. You're going to do both. <laughs> you know, like I. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, I think it's. And that's always been the case, right? You notable a, that Apple is even allowing this. I mean, just knowing Apple. That's what right? I mean. It's interesting. I, there's something going on that makes this make sense for them. I mean, maybe maybe MagSafe is just too easy for anyone to copy or something. Or yeah, I, I don't, or they just don't have the IP, they think, because it's just magnets yeah. on a phone or whatever anyway well, i we i mean hopefully someday we'll find out but regardless like you said this is just a good thing straight up like for everybody yeah, yeah. Um, i mean we now have a couple mag safe chargers in our house yeah two yep so, oh don't worry brad mag safe two will not be backwards compatible yeah i know <laughs> now <laughs> you know first of all <laughs> well this is sort of the the matter of wireless charging i guess you know what does that make sense yeah sort of well i guess chi wireless charging in the beginning was that and then apple did mag safe and now Right. Two great tastes, you know? Yeah. Did I mention that I bought chargers? Did I, did I go through this? I can't remember. So. Okay. So uh, before we went to Chicago last week, yeah, it feels like a month ago. It was last week because there was a Harry Potter thing up there. My daughter loves Harry Potter. And we're like, eh, it's in between. It's We're closed for the week at work. And we weren't mm -hmm. podcasting. We're like, let's go to Chicago for this thing. So we got tickets and whatever. And we're also doing a bunch of traveling coming up this year. Right, And it's just a rat nest of trying to figure out chargers, right? So we have, yeah. like, my wife and I both have iPhones. We both have watches. My kid has an iPad. Mm -hmm. And we're, there's only three of us. I can't even imagine, like, a family of four, whatever. So I'm so trying to figure out how devices, do I not... Sorry to interrupt, but her iPad and your phones are all lightning? So, y yes. iPad yeah. phones are lightning and then watches are wireless. Yeah, yeah. So the question becomes is like, what is the best way? Like the charging situation becomes just a dumpster fire of. Well, well you need a USB C charger, basically that. Right. Has high yeah. wattage and. So what I ended up doing, and I found them, and I mm -hmm. recommend anybody who can find them do this. I almost bought more, but I only needed two. At Best Buy, Samsung sells a 
it's like a GAN, whatever the the newer one mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's two USB C. The yep. top one is sixty five watts. The bottom right, one so is spec. Like twenty five watts. And then there's a USB A. I don't even know what it is. It doesn't really matter at this point because probably five, but whatever. Who cares? It's a thing. That's yeah. Paul. These things were on sale for twenty nine bucks yeah. each. Yeah. 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 Each. I usually buy like the anchor ones on sale, but very similar. So yeah, so the top one could charge a laptop, but the bottom ones are good enough for you, your iPhones, right? Those yeah. are full speed, fast charging. And then I assume you would plug the iPad into the other one. Oh yeah. Like and that. then she also has, this is, this is what I was forgetting. She also has a, a GPS watch that we use. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's just what she wears and this is like yeah. Fitbit yeah, counter yeah. and whatever. And that's USB A. So my requirements okay. are that I had to have a USB A. So you need to have at least one lightning cable that terminates in USB A, uh, just to, so that mm-hmm. uh, if you could, you know, for all for full charging uh, across the phones and uh, iPad. So, but where we've got it to now is I don't take those because her iPad is lightning, but we have mm-hmm. USB to lightning from the phones. <clears throat> so I bought another one of those. I just gave all my money to the, the peripheral cable, companies, and so yeah. now we only have to take two wall plug-in things, mm-hmm. and takes care of all of it but yeah it's 29 bucks these things are usually like they're like 59 or something yeah usually. I, almost, I there was an anchor sale uh, probably sometime between christmas and new year's and i was like i almost bought you know a tiny little tiny brick that probably does i think it might be 100 watts 65 or 100 watts whatever two plugs mm-hmm. and i'm like i actually don't need this like, yeah. i have plenty of i have you know i use one of those in a, a slightly bigger one it's probably this big but it's in the kitchen does two usb i don't remember the the power anymore but it's more than enough to charge, you know, an iPhone and a, a tablet or the tablet in my, what, uh, what do you call it, mm-hmm. Pixel phone, whatever. So, yeah, I mean, it's, no, this stuff's key. And I take it with me when we go away. Same thing, like multi-port charging is huge, you know, especially international too, I mean, any, any any travel. But yeah, because you, you have you like minimize three the you know, outlets you in a get. whole hotel room. Exactly. Or you could have enough outlets, but they're in a hotel. So they're like super loose. Yeah. So some of them don't even work properly. You mm-hmm. got to, you know, anyway, yeah. That's good. There we go. Bon voyage. Oh, is it Friday yet? Close.